All right, let's do it. Let's talk about the D word, a diabetes, a gestational diabetes. Let's go. I'm Tina B. Me and my pillows are back. Today we're talking all about gestational diabetes and it's a pretty important topic to cover because it's one of the most common medical complications of pregnancy today. Around 7% of people have some sort of diabetes as a complication in their pregnancy. And gestational diabetes is a temporary diabetes that comes up during pregnancy and it's usually most common in the second and third trimesters. Listen, I know right now you're thinking to yourself, Tina, am I going to get gestational diabetes? There is definitely a list of things that are going to put some people at a higher risk than others, but like many things in pregnancy, there are lots of people who have zero risk factors who are going to get gestational diabetes. And this is why testing and screening for gestational diabetes in your pregnancy is so, so important. We're going to go over that later in the video, but back to the risk factors, they are going to include if you are overweight or obese, if you have a previous pregnancy that was diagnosed with gestational diabetes, if you have a previously large baby, and I'm not just talking like you have a big baby, I'm talking a baby that had macrosomia or was over nine pounds at birth, if you have PCOS, if you have a family history of diabetes, like a direct family history, not like uh, grandma's, aunt's, uncle's son or something like that, and if you have high blood pressure, and then there are also certain cultural descents that are at a higher risk on their own of having gestational diabetes. You might also hear gestational diabetes referred to as GDM. So if you want to be one of the cool cats, just start tossing around that word. GDM, GDM. Now GDM does have some risk factors for you and for baby. On baby's side, it can be a larger than normal birth weight. Baby could have some issues controlling their blood sugar once they are born, and it can actually lead to preterm birth, which in itself has a couple of risk factors. One being if baby is too preterm, it can lead to some breathing issues, and it can also lead to jaundice, and GDM does carry with it a risk of stillbirth. For yourself, GDM in pregnancy can lead to a high blood pressure or more seriously, preeclampsia. It can also lead you to needing a C-section if baby is indeed too large to fit out this exit route. It can lead to some heavier bleeding postpartum and it can actually cause you to develop type 2 diabetes when pregnancy is all said and done. But can you avoid the GDM? That's the question. Eh, not really necessarily. We do know that leading a healthy lifestyle in pregnancy is really good for you and really good for baby. So staying hydrated, eating well, and moving your body when you're able to. And when you think about it, that's just really a good thing to adopt in life in general, not just in pregnancy. But will it have you dodge the diabetes? That is still uncertain. I am going to put on my professor's hat because it is time for Anatomy 101 with your girl, Tina B. Let's talk about what normally happens in your body when you eat something. Normally, no baby in your at all. So you pick a snack, chocolate cake, an apple, whatever it may be, whatever you fancy. You put it in your body and it gets broken down into a few different things. One of which is glucose, aka sugar, because your body's cells need that glucose for energy, but it has to get into those cells, right? So you eat it and now you have a bunch of sugar floating around in your bloodstream. Now your pancreas, which is a cool organ that looks kind of like corn on the cob in a really funky shape, it is going to secrete a hormone called insulin. And that insulin is what our body needs to open the doors to the cells to allow that sugar to flow from the blood into your cells to be used. That's how it works. Super simple, right? But now you're going to paint a baby into the picture. And that baby comes with its very own super organ known as the placenta. And you've heard me rave about placentas before. They are really, really cool. One of their flexes is that they can actually secrete their own pregnancy hormone. But pregnancy hormones and insulin, they don't always get along. They're sort of like siblings and that can cause trouble. So let's say you're pregnant and you eat something. You're obviously past the first trimester. You're feeling much better. You have a snack and now your blood sugar levels start to rise. And what your body wants to do is it wants to move that sugar from your blood into the cells. Because like we said, the cells need that energy, but also your body is trying to lower its overall blood sugar level because functioning with a very high blood sugar all of the time is really bad for your body. So your pancreas is like, let me help you out here. It secretes that insulin, which allows the doors to open. And so the sugar starts to leave the blood to go into the cells. But then your pancreas is like, hold up, let's have a little bit of fun here. And it secretes its own pregnancy hormones. And those pregnancy hormones, they actually block insulin's ability to allow that sugar to go into the cells. And a lot of people who are pregnant, well, their pancreas is able to compensate by secreting more insulin to overcome those pregnancy hormones. But in people with gestational diabetes, their pancreas and their insulin levels are not able to compete with those nasty pregnancy hormones. 
So in people with GDM, their overall blood sugar levels, they are gonna stay elevated. And guess what? They are gonna pass that sugary goodness right on down to baby. So here we are. You know what it is and you know what the risks are, but how do you know if you have it? Your provider's gonna want you to test for gestational diabetes between weeks 24 and 28 of your pregnancy. But if you have certain risk factors, they may want you to test even earlier than that. But the test is pretty standard. You're gonna intake 50 grams of sugar. You are going to check your blood sugar level one hour after and the result the results of that test is going to determine if you have gestational diabetes or if you don't. The gold standard of testing that is recommended by ACOG, that is validated and FDA approved, is the glucola drink. And I'm willing to bet if you're pregnant, you have either read about the glucola or you've heard about it from your neighbor or your friend or your great aunt Sally. Someone's told you about the glucola. That is the little bottle of sugary goodness that is exactly 50 grams of glucose. And apparently now it comes in a whole bunch of flavors. I only had the orange, but now it's, you can taste the rainbow now. But you take this little bottle and you scull it back as quick as you can in a set amount of time. And you wait your hour and then you check your blood sugar. But the glucola can make some people feel a little yucky. So here's my tips for the glucola. Bring in a glass of ice and bring in a straw because making it colder and using a straw to pass it over your tongue that much quicker and that much farther can make a big difference. And you can actually talk to your provider about taking a medication ahead of time that can help you with nausea if that's an issue for you. Even with that said, some people are still a hard pass on the Glucola drink. So there are alternatives available that you can chat with your provider about, but you do need to know that they are not FDA approved and they are not as sensitive. So the alternatives to the Glucola drink, chances are they are going to miss more cases of gestational diabetes. The first alternative I wanna tell you about is something called the Fresh Test. Now, I don't know a ton about it. It's not FDA approved, but it is gaining popularity. So I wanna tell you about it. This is something you purchase on a website. They send it to you. You mix it up before you go in for your lab appointment and it has the same 50 grams of glucose. So it should, in theory, give you the same result on that one hour glucose test that the Glucola drink would, but it has less ingredients on the packet itself. Another alternative your provider might give to you is testing your own blood sugar at home. This is gonna involve you poking your finger with a needle and testing your blood sugar levels on a machine at home between that 24 and 28 weeks of gestation for two to four weeks, and then again for one week at 32 weeks. Again, this is not as good as the glucola drink, but this is an alternative that you can discuss with your provider. Now, a little asterisk, if you have had bariatric surgery, chances are your provider is not going to want you to do that standardized glucola test. And this is because you can develop something called dumping syndrome after you've had a certain type of bariatric surgery. This is when you take in a big load of glucose and instead of your blood sugar levels elevating, your blood sugar levels are very quickly plummet and you are left feeling really, really crappy. Dizzy, lightheaded, some people pass out. We do not want this as an experience. So if you've had that bariatric surgery, chances are your provider is gonna advise you to do those at-home finger pricks. Something you might hear mentioned on social media as a way to diagnose gestational diabetes with one simple blood test is a hemoglobin A1C, but this is false news. A hemoglobin A1C is a blood test that is great for regular diabetes, but it's not great for gestational diabetes because that blood test, it's gonna tell you how your blood sugars have been functioning over the previous three months. But if you're just starting to develop gestational diabetes and you take that blood test at around 24 weeks of pregnancy, it could come back totally normal because your blood sugar leading up to that test, they were doing pretty good. And that is because gestational diabetes, usually it gets worse as the pregnancy continues. So doing a hemoglobin A1C to tell what your blood sugars were doing is not gonna tell us that you have gestational diabetes and it's likely going to get missed. We wanna know what your blood sugars are doing moving forward as your body is responding to increased sugar loads as your pregnancy progresses. We don't wanna know what your blood sugars were doing previously. We talked earlier that if you have gestational diabetes, there is a slight risk that you could develop type two diabetes later in life. So it's important if you've had diabetes in pregnancy that you actually get your blood sugar levels tested again around six to 12 weeks postpartum to make sure that your body is back to normal. All right, so you went and you did the testing and you have been diagnosed with gestational diabetes. First thing, Take a big deep breath. I assure you it's going to be okay. The most important thing from here on out is making sure that your blood sugar levels stay pretty consistent for the health of you and the health of your baby. 
Now, what can you expect? First off, you can be expected to test your blood sugar levels at home throughout the day. Now, the number of times that you have to do a finger poke, and yes, I'm sorry, the finger poke is the only way to do this, but the number of times that you have to poke your finger throughout the day will be determined between you, your provider, and probably a diabetic management team. You may also meet with a dietitian to discuss what types of foods are gonna keep your blood sugar levels at a more consistent level throughout the day. And if you haven't already, you're gonna to wanna to incorporate some exercise, some activity, some movement around 30 minutes a day, five days a week is gonna do your body great. So when people come in and they have GDM, they're usually either diet controlled, meaning they've been able to tweak their diet in a way that's keeping those blood sugar levels consistent, or they've been put on insulin. And neither of those options is better than the other. It just means that that's the option you need for your specific pregnancy. ACOG usually recommends insulin first because it's a medication that doesn't cross the placenta. And that means your baby is not gonna see the same effects of insulin that you're seeing when you're taking it. Then people of course ask, well, because my blood sugar levels are well controlled, I can stop poking my finger, right? Cause that really hurts. Please don't do that. Please don't stop taking your blood sugar levels at home. It is probably more important now than ever that you continue to take your blood sugars as your pregnancy progresses. And if you thought that those finger pokes were gonna be the only added bonus of this pregnancy, think again. You're likely gonna be keyed up for some more frequent monitoring as the pregnancy progresses, especially in those last few weeks. Things like kick counts at home or coming in for an NST to check on baby's heart rate or a specialized ultrasound called a BPP where they're gonna look at things like baby's breathing movements and tone and overall movements and the amount of amniotic fluid that you have in your belly. Now I know you, I see you, you're thinking to yourself, Tina, if I have the diabetes, do I have to have my baby early? Will I need an induction? The answer to this is not necessarily. <laughs> if your blood sugar levels are really well controlled in the pregnancy and there's nothing further complicating the pregnancy, chances are then you can set your sights on your due date. Of course, that's provider dependent, so chat with them. But if those blood sugar levels are not well controlled, they're up and down and all over the place, or you're needing more insulin as the pregnancy progresses, or those other observational pieces we just talked about, maybe they aren't looking as great as we would like them to, or your pregnancy is complicated. Maybe you're a little overweight, or you're a little older, or you have high blood pressure, then those things are likely going to push your provider towards wanting you to have your baby before 40 weeks gestation. Okay, diabetes, it's a big, big topic, right? It's a massive black hole of info you could easily fall into. So hopefully this video is gonna help you sift through some of that. We talked at the end about maybe having baby early. Would you look at that? It's a whole video all about the induction of labor process and what you can expect if you need one. So maybe you should click on it and go watch. Bye.